Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about fish photography. So whether you're using something like a DSLR or just your mobile phone, hopefully we can get better pictures with a few easy tips. I'm going to use this tank as the kind of test subject with Humphrey here, see if we can get some decent pictures of Humphrey. And the reason I want to make this video now is I want you to be able to take better pictures yourself and I want you to send them to me. Every year for the last few years I've done a charity calendar where I've taken some fishy pictures, put them into a calendar, sold that and given all the profits to a charity. Uh, last year we did viewer submitted pictures so it was all your tanks and fish and it went really well so I want to do that again and just talk about in this video a little bit about what makes a good picture, what are some tips and tricks to get the best out of your fish photography, what makes a bad picture, what to try and avoid, that kind of thing. So whether you're using your fancy smart camera or just a mobile phone, we can get pictures that are good enough um, to put in the calendar for thousands, hopefully, of people to enjoy. More likely not thousands. So whether you use these tips and tricks to help you submit a picture for the calendar, it's just for you to use on Instagram, or you maybe want to submit something to magazines and online forums, that kind of thing, we'll hopefully get a few tips. I made a video about this a couple of years ago, um, which was more about the videoing side of things, but I'll leave a link up there and you can go and watch that. Some good tips in there, but we'll concentrate on the phone. So I've got an old ass rubbish Android mobile phone um, it's a good few years old, it's not current, um, we'll see what the best we can do with this is. My first tip should be a bit of a no-brainer. Um, clean, clean things. If you are working with a dirty tank, your picture could be as sharp, as crisp as anything, but it's not going to look good, it's going to be spoiled. So clean the glass, clean the lens on your camera. So once you've got everything nice and clean and you're happy with it, the next stage is to consider the environment. So what kind of picture are you going to take? Are you going to take a full tank shot? Are you going to take a picture of a specific fish or plant? An area of aquascape, something along those lines? And think about what's going to be in the background. If I take a picture, a whole tank shot of this, I'm going to have a mess of cables up here. I'm going to have bricks in the background. It's not going to look very good. The tank itself might look nice, but the picture isn't going to be very aesthetically pleasing. And if I take a picture of the fish itself, that's probably going to work best in this situation. Other environmental factors are things like lights. So you can see here, there's a big shadow. You can see my shiny head. The door, um, there's lights in the fish room. This is actually a really challenging place to take pictures. So you need to consider the angles you can go at. So you might be able to move around uh, and get an angle where you don't see any reflections. Or you might be able to use curtains or turn off lights, potentially, to get the reflections down to a minimum. Um, time of day, if you're in a room with windows, wait till night time, you might get a better thing there. Um, it's all about getting the, the focus of the light being on the tank, and light is one of the most important parts. Add more light. Um, it doesn't matter if you think you've got too much light, this isn't light for you to enjoy day to day, this is light to give as much light as possible to the picture. Um, I, I find it's a little bit like if you can flood it with light, you can afford to then bring down the exposure um, and it just gives for a bit more of an arty feel to a picture if you can have a lower exposure rather than something that's overexposed and just super bright. But there are cases where going for high exposure will work as well. So experiment. Storage is cheap. Take tons of pictures. The one thing you'll learn is that if you take enough pictures, you'll find something that works, and then if you find something that works, you can then refine that and make it better and better and better each time. So light being the number one thing. So for an instance, in Humphrey's tank, I have a second light that I can add. If I turn this one on, that will make that even brighter. And I can even turn up the brightness of the original light that's in there. So that gives me something that I can both move around, make sure that I've got it just how I want it, and then I can turn the exposure down a little bit and make it just that little bit more artsy. Most modern camera phones um, and apps have um, the ability to go to a bit of a manual mode. You want to try and set either your exposure, as much as possible you want to be able to set manually. And the best thing to do is to kind of frame your picture, decide where you're going to take it, get it into focus and wait for the fish to come along. So if you can set your exposure, your focus, anything else manually and just leave it on there so all you have to do is press the button, that'll give you the best tip. As well as, if you don't press the button, use it on a timer if you can. So give yourself like a, a one second timer because every time you do that and you move it, you've got the risk 
that you're just going to skew the picture and make it blur a little bit. If your app has a sports mode or something like that where you can get a higher shutter speed, again, the light will help with that. But it helps you capture that crispness and not get a blur if the fish just won't stay still. If you are able to get close enough, um, this is a, a Jimmy Gimbal trick, get right up to the glass. And if you haven't got a tripod or anything, you holding this against the glass will give you that level of stability and you can move it around to get to the right place. You know, you can press the button, slight delay, take the picture, and you've got the best chance of getting that nice and crisp and sharp. So when we're considering our picture, if we're going for the full tank, then yeah, consider the background because that can just make it that just little bit less impressive as a picture. Um, but if, you can, if you've got a lovely house with a nice plain wall or maybe some decorations in the background, yeah, go for the full tank shot. That'd be great. But just consider the angles, try and get it straight. Often you'll get grid lines in photography apps where you can line things up properly. There's the rule of thirds and any kind of normal photography principles you can apply to this as well. So just try and get things lined up, a nice angle, a deliberate angle, not something that looks like you took it by accident basically is what you're going for. If you're going for the fish itself, there are a couple of techniques that seem to work better. If you, again, if you consider the rule of thirds and you have that grid line going across the screen, you want to get the fish in one of those crosshairs ideally pointing towards the empty space. A more artsy photo would be to have the fish on one side, some space on the other side, and you always want the fish pointing into the space. Pointing, as I mean facing into the space. You want to focus the focus, the focus, focus, the focus on the eye um, rather than the tail or an anal fin or something like that. It's the, it's always go for the eye because that looks the best as well. Sometimes you can be sat here for ages just waiting for a fish to, to swim into space. Again, use that technique to maybe start to try to reframe it, um, or you sometimes just have to wait a long time until the fish turns up and gets into that space. And then the last tip is make use of things like, if you're using Instagram or something like that, there will be filters and editing tools. There's tons of apps, both like iOS and Android, where you can use that to enhance your pictures. But I'm guilty of this myself. Don't over edit things. Don't push everything to 11 sometimes less is more, a little bit of subtlety um, can really go a long way. If you get something and you're just like, oh god, high cop layer, it doesn't look good and it, it's off-putting. A lot of times you can't describe why it's off-putting, but it doesn't look the best. So go easy on the, the editing apps. So we've done all those things, we've considered our environment, we've taken away any reflections we can take away, we've got the shot that we want to get, we've kind of framed it up, We've chosen the app that we're going to use to take the picture. We've set the things to manual that we can set to manual. Got the tripod up, whether it's manual or an actual tripod or manually holding it against the, the tank itself. Time and patience. That's the hardest skill I think to learn is just to give it enough time to wait for that shot to come. And don't be afraid to take more and more pictures. Very rarely do you get it on the first attempt. Um, go back and look at the pictures you've taken and really give it a bit of a critical eye yourself as does that look good would that look good on a magazine would that look good even though you're not going to put it in a magazine necessarily think about it from that point of view take a step back have someone else look at it is there poop in the background is there a big shiny reflection of your bald head is there something else in there that just makes it go mm, it's not quite good enough you know what I mean you're, I'm not saying you always have to get perfection there's a time and a place for every picture but if you want the tips for the best ones, these are the kind of easy things that you can do that will make a difference. Shall we see if I can put my own um, words into action and see if we can get a halfway decent picture of Humphrey with an old Android smartphone? He seemed to think not. <laughs> right, so we've got the light cranked up. Um, I have put some curtains behind me here. So we have got rid of some of the reflections. I'm going to go and turn out the big lights and then I'm going to pick an angle because I'm going to go with the fish because I don't think a whole tank photo would be the best use of this tank. Um, and see if I can get Humphrey to come in front of these lovely plastic pants, pants, plants, and see if I can't get a shot of him, either a full shot or maybe just his head with the Hopefully the plant's a little bit blurry in the background. We'll see what we can do. That's that's the aim anyway, so I'll turn the light off first. So I've turned off the lights on that entire side of the fish room as well as the lights overhead and the lights for filming. 
So we've got it as dark as I can. I obviously can still see a bit of a reflection there. So I'm going to have to choose my angles. If I choose, I'll turn this onto video now so I can show you what I'm talking about. If I choose this angle, then the computer screen and everything is on the right hand side. So you can see that we don't want that. So I'm going to have to go with this angle because there's less reflection. Um, so I'm going to go with this kind of composition, uh, roughly in this kind of area, and see what we can get. I sat for about 20-30 minutes there trying to get a picture. I took 50 or 60 in total, and out of that I got about two, which I think are possibly useful. So this is what they came out with raw from taking them. Um, fine, but I think I can make them a little bit better with a little touch of editing, so this is what we've ended up with. I mean, it's very subjective if you think it's good or not. It's completely down to you. I think that's as good as I'm going to get for that little 20-minute session that I sat through. So, hopefully, you found some of those tips useful. If not, the video I linked earlier, I'll put it in the description as well. That's got some further tips. Um, have a bash. See how you get on. See if you can get some good pictures. And if you want to submit them, I'll leave a link in the description to my Discord server where you can go and submit pictures to get into the charity calendar. It's all it's just the need of charity. It's a, a bit of fun. Submit your pictures. We'll pick them out somehow and include the best ones in the calendar and then that will be up for sale and all the profits go to charity. Um, if you want to find out more about that, come and join me on one of my live streams or jump into the Discord server and ask questions. Um, but live streams 9pm UK time every Friday. We can talk about it a little bit more there. And if nothing else, I hope this was in some way useful. And thank you for joining me. See you in the next one. Bye!